Humans are waging a senseless war on nature. Our actions have adversely affected 75% of the land and 66% of the oceans. Our increasing population and changing climate has led to the exploitation and destruction of natural habitats. At the same time, nature is declining at rates unprecedented in human history, with as many as a million species facing extinction. We're running out of time. If we do not take dramatic action, we will witness irreversible damage to our natural world and risk the collapse of our societies. Conservation and effective conservation projects are key to how we change direction. And the good news is that funding for the environment is on the rise, as governments and businesses are becoming increasingly aware of the need to act, and quickly, to protect our natural world so that it can protect us. The UK has been an international leader in conservation and biodiversity and continues to have significant ambition in this area, both internationally and here at home in the United Kingdom. Internationally, we will commit three billion pounds of international climate finance to see conservation outcomes around the world through the Nature for Climate Fund. We'll also, here in the UK, working to increase carbon storage and biodiversity across our landscapes. This work must be well informed by evidence. We're critically reliant on using evidence to make the best policy for biodiversity and habitat outcomes. We're facing an evidence emergency that's stopping us conserving biodiversity in the way we need to for the future of the planet. Decisions are being made without the best available information and funds are being wasted on actions known to be ineffective. We needed to change this. So we worked with our international group of experts to create a free open access website of evidence. Using our conservation evidence database, busy practitioners and policymakers can take less than a minute to look at whether something is effective and a few more to find an alternative intervention if it's not. And it's working. Conservation organisations are using the evidence and modifying plans to increase the chance of success. At the Whitley Fund for Nature, we're proud to have awarded 20 million in conservation funding to over 200 conservationists working in 80 countries across the Global South. We ask applicants to really scrutinise their project design, their assumptions and objectives, and look at the available evidence, looking at the conservation evidence website, and using all of that combined, really think about why it is that their objectives and their proposed interventions will succeed and be effective. We have a huge network of global collaborators who are helping us to collate the evidence and to embed it in practice. Some of these have become our evidence champions, organisations who are committed to use evidence in their work. Others are also routinely using evidence, such as Aroro, with the Small Mammal Conservation Organisation based in Nigeria. The key aim of our conservation research and intervention projects at Afi Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary and Cross River National Park is really to prevent wildfires in order to protect wildlife habitats, especially for the endangered short-tail round leaf bat. Without evidence, making decisions is kind of like walking blind. The conservation evidence ecosystem of tools has really helped us to narrow down what we need to deploy our conservation uh, intervention, but also what kinds of evidence we need to generate uh, where possible within our project. So it's a really cool way of setting yourself up uh, for success. I am Vikash Tataya, Conservation Director of the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation. In my role, I try to save birds, plants and reptiles of the Republic of Mauritius. The key aim of the conservation research project that we did was to try to exclude African land snails from entering nests of echo parakeets and smothering the babies to death. I have loved publishing in conservation evidence. And I would advise all conservation practitioners, the minute that you have a problem, the first reaction would be almost a knee-jerk reaction is to go on the conservation evidence website and look out for examples of similar problems and solutions which have been found. It's free and it saves you a hell of a lot of time and effort trying to reinvent the wheel otherwise. 
Designing new woods is, is a lot more than just about planting trees. It's, it's a long-term commitment to establishing those woods uh, so that they can realise the benefits for the future, benefits for nature recovery, for, uh, to, for the climate crisis. And our new Woodland Creation Guide uses evidence to enable practitioners to achieve that. I'm Ali Evans, I'm a marine ecologist researching ways of enhancing and restoring marine biodiversity. Artificial structures are spreading around our coasts and seas to support growing populations and marine industries. The problem is that they often uh, cause negative impacts on the receiving environments and they don't tend to support the vibrant variety of marine life found in natural rocky habitats. But it is possible to enhance biodiversity on marine structures by building in different habitat designs. This is called eco-engineering. So now we've created this evidence-based resource through the Conservation Evidence Project to help people to plan, design and manage eco-engineered artificial structures that are better for marine biodiversity. Conservation groups like these from all around the world are working to reverse the damage we've done to nature and restore the Earth's ecosystems. But this needs to be achieved with real speed and efficiency. There is no time to waste. I'm excited that Bill, with his team at Cambridge, and all the experts they connect with around the world, have created this amazing resource. It's directing conservationists towards the activities that have the best possible chances of protecting our habitats and species, the life support systems of our planet.